Hey guys, what is going on? So in the video today, I'm very excited because I just finished up on this project here. This is my Scout model backpack that I'm getting ready to ship off to my friend Eric. Eric, thanks so much for introducing me to this leather. It's been a phenomenal leather to work with. So let me talk about how this bag came together before I start talking about the bag itself. So my buddy Eric on Instagram, his, his username is Eric Deo. He approached me and like my buddy JD, one day I'm eight and vision, he has an affinity for blue leathers. He calls it his blue void. I've discovered recently that I actually have an affinity for mostly green leathers. So I have a green void. Well, Eric has a yellow void. <laughs> he likes yellow colored leather, yellow boots. He's got some trickers boots in, in acorn. He's got some, a lot of wingtips in general. He's kind of a yellow leather fiend. He's got other colors of leather shoes, but his favorite is the yellow. He's just got an affinity for yellow, so he wanted to find a yellow leather to uh, build the bag out of. And so we were going over the various uh, options. He, he really wanted to do like a custom bag, but he just wasn't sure which leather to go with. We were actually going back and forth between various different battle vegetable tanned yellow leathers, uh, specifically as offered on the Rocky Mountain Leather Supply website. And we settled on this one. Specifically, this is called Golden Yellow Waxy. This Golden Yellow Waxy is a rustic oiled pull-up. It's by Battalassi Carlo Tannery in Italy. It's vegetable tanned. Uh, the cut is double shoulder, so no belly and a higher yield. The grain is a top full grain oiled rustic pull-up smooth. The flesh or bottom side is smooth. The firmness is medium, so 6 out of 10. The dye is completely struck through. The finish is full aniline. Is it burnishable? Yes. The thickness is 4.5 ounces. So it says, waxy vegetable tan leather comes from the Battalassi Carlo Tannery in Italy. They are well known for their premium vegetable tanned leathers and the beautiful colors they are able to produce. This vegetable tan is their top grade. It is full grain and has a nice supple feel with a small amount of firmness. This leather has a unique rustic pull-up that adds beautiful depth to the leather and makes for an amazing patina as it ages. The leather is dyed completely through and has a nice soft flesh side. This leather has a great feel in the hand and it is easy to cut and skive. I was kind of surprised, or I guess I shouldn't have been surprised because the height I ordered it was 14 to 16 square feet and yeah it was definitely a smaller side so really I don't have much scrap left over like really the bag ate up most all the leather that came in it. One of the other leathers that Eric was contemplating going with was the yellow Pueblo which is a really nice one. The Pueblo leather, I'm learning so much about Bad Lassie. The Pueblo is a vegetable tan leather it's got most of the same descriptions as the oiled waxy. It's also vegetable tanned, medium firmness, same shoulder, same double shoulder cut. It's just got like more of a nubuck appearance, I would say. Yeah, he was also considering the yellow Minerva, which was also a very good choice. So the Minerva has less firmness. It is a vaquetta leather that is infused with a special blend of Italian fat wax, giving it the famous hand feel attributed to the Vaquetta name. This leather has a beautiful smooth grain with a beautiful depth to the leather color. The veg tan will have an amazing patina as it ages. The leather is dyed completely through. So yeah, the Minerva looks really good too. It just looks a uh, little bit more soft, a little bit more, maybe a little bit more luxurious, maybe a little bit more delicate being that it's a uh, less firm of a temper hide. And so yeah, it was those three and I think that Eric made the correct choice this is the choice I would have gone with as well, uh, especially in retrospect. Now, they're all three basically cousins. They're all three basically gonna be more or less the same thing, but I think this one's gonna really show its patina very well. We went back and forth on what the strap components were gonna be. He wanted brown straps to go with the yellow. We were between going for Acadia Leathers, the Tasman Tanneries, Autumn Harvest. We were also contemplating brown chrome Excel and we actually settled on the old batch of British tan double shot. 
So my newer batch of British Tan Double Shot is going to be a lot more of a tan color. This older batch is a lot darker of a brown, much closer to standard brown chrome XL or British Tan chrome XL. I think that this, this shade of brown really complements the yellow, probably the nicest of the three. So I did an outer cargo compartment. I slicked the edges and I used tokenol along the edges and you can tell the difference between so I didn't use tokenol on like the top flap edge here but I did use tokenol on the side where, where where the two edges meet together I think that sort of muted the loud unfinished edge and made it look just a, a lot more clean I did that on the outer cargo compartment as well I did keepers for the main enclosure straps here uh, to house those so that they're not flopping around when the enclosure straps are not fastened. I did all contrasting leather washers. So when we had uh, the British tan double shot, I would overlay the golden yellow waxy leather washer over that to give it a nice contrast. For the back, we did the same strap system that I did on Andres's Scout backpack, which was simple D-ring shoulder straps fastened in place with simple raw brass D-ring fixtures here and here. Yeah, I'm actually very sort of amazed by how comfortable this simple strap system really is. I know I talk a lot about my tension distribution strap system and I love it, but I'm thinking that this is basically just as good of an alternative. Much easier to do, much faster to do. And then we've got a pull handle here or a carry handle and then fully adjustable at the base straps. And then so, yeah, so on the base here, I actually, instead of riveting that in, I use Chicago screws to get that in. Chicago screws are a lot easier and they're easy to replace as well. So I, I threw that in there. Now the interior is not lined. The interior looks like a uh, Pueblo leather. As with my Scout design, it's basically this top enclosure strap is stitched on, but aside from that, it's basically one piece of leather for the front, the bottom, and the back. So from that perspective, it's very easy to put together. And then for the stitching, I used Ritza Tiger Thread in brown. The brown, I think, really complements the golden tan waxy. I think it's really unique. I'm getting a lot of good positive feedback on it. I think uh, Eric made some very good selections. Eric, my friend, I hope you enjoy this bag. It was a pleasure working with you. I hope that you're satisfied and I hope this bag brings you many years of use and enjoyment. I also threw in some scrap pieces of the golden waxy for you to test out different conditioners on it. But honestly, I wouldn't try to condition this for, for a little while. I would uh, let it just patina naturally when it is time. Probably a Saphir product that won't darken it would be my recommendation. But So yeah, I threw in the leather scraps, but this is probably something like that I would recommend. So this is the Saphir Oiled Leather Cure Gras. And this is supposed to, my buddy Mario uses this on his Kudu leathers and it doesn't darken it at all. Similar to Vic 4, does not darken finished leather. And so I haven't tried it out on mine yet. I do want to do a video of me doing that. When the time comes to condition this, this might be something that I would recommend, something that won't darken it up too much. Cause yeah, once you add a bunch of conditioners to this leather, it'll, it'll darken up. But yeah, this isn't something that you need to condition for, for many, many years. So, so anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. What do you think of this bag? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. My username is aerosurferlv. You could also follow Eric on Instagram at Eric Deo. Give him a follow. He's a, he's a yellow maniac. Loves the yellow. He's got yellow cardigans, yellow boots, yellow shoes. And, uh, now he has a yellow bag. So, <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see y'all in my next video.